Let's let's do our super chats. Nathan's gaming. Thank you so much. I love you too. Well, thank you, Nathan. How do I know if my PC is properly optimized for gaming? Drivers and Windows up to date, but some games stutter while others run perfect. First, a word from our sponsor, Crypto.com, home of the Visa card that pays you up to 8% in rewards and the app that pays you up to 14.5% annually on your crypto stake. Join more than 10 million users on the world's fastest growing crypto app as you trade with confidence on the world's fastest and most secure crypto exchange. More information and a special signup offer at the end of this video. Well, you can only optimize to your hardware. If some games stutter and others don't, is it possible that those games just aren't designed to run on your hardware? I, I, I'll give you a simple example. Call of Duty Online Multiplayer in the more recent versions, uh, Modern Warfare, Black Ops 4, etc. Those will run on modest hardware. They're designed to run to at least function on a wide variety of hardware. And I get comments constantly from people who go, well, I mean, I've got a six core, 12 thread CPU. I've got 16 gigs of RAM. I play Call of Duty. What's the problem? Your problem is you have a stuttery frame time garbage mess. Well, he hasn't given us his specs and he hasn't given us his games. He hasn't given us any information. So we can't exactly give you a... I'm just talking in general because uh, he didn't give it right because he didn't give us the specifics. I have to just sort of come up with specifics. And the thing is, is it will run and it will display frames. I actually had a comment the other day from somebody who said that they're, they're, they're playing Fortnite on an i7-3770. For those of you who weren't around, forgot, whatever, an i7-3770 is a four core, eight thread chip from 2012. It is 10 years old. That is Ivy Bridge, third generation from Intel. Now, if it's a 3070 and no K on it, he, I mean, he said to, he didn't put the K in the comment, but sometimes people just leave the K off without thinking. You know, that's gonna run somewhere in the mid three-ish gigahertz range, 3.5, 3.8, depending upon whether it's K or non-K, whether it's overclocked or not if the cooling's any good, that sort of thing. You know, if it's a if it's a crappy Dell Optiplex box versus a custom build machine with a nice motherboard. Mm -hmm. and the fact of the matter is, Fortnite will run on that. And Fortnite actually, when Fortnite first came out, Fortnite actually would run just fine on that. Fortnite well, ran on very modest hardware when it first launched. Until they did the service thing on it. Well, it's a service game. All the features, they've added ray tracing, which of course, serious competitive players don't turn on. You put it in performance mode, but That game is no longer all that lightweight. It will run on cheap hardware, but that doesn't make it good on cheap hardware. We recently upgraded our daughter's computer at home. Mm -hmm. Now, I realize that my daughter is spoiled for hardware, but we have a tech YouTube channel and I've got the hardware laying around. So it's like, oh, okay, well, we can do this. And it's good experience to do things like this because it lets me mess with a lot of computers and have more experience than if I just did one or two builds here and there. She has a B550 motherboard and she had a Ryzen 7 3800X. We did that build on the channel and ended up being her computer. We've changed a variety of things in it. GPU got upgraded. I've added RAM to it. Uh, we've added storage to it, etc. cetera. But um, about what, a month ago, two months ago? About two months ago, we swapped out her 3800X. Why 3800X? because I had one from the reviews and the benchmarks we did. I wanted to do show 3700X versus 3800X, and it's like, I got it, you know? So I built her machine with it. I replaced it with a Ryzen 9 5900X. Now, a 3800X is an 8-core, 16-thread Zen 2 chip. The, the 5900X is a 12-core, 24-thread Zen 3 chip. For playing Fortnite in performance mode, with an RTX 3070 on a 1440p 144 hertz monitor, do you think a 13 year old can tell the difference by just changing the CPU? Is there a noticeable upgrade from a Ryzen 7 3800X to a Ryzen 9 5900X on a 3070 at 1440p 144 hertz? 
Yes, that's in a swivel. No, why bother? All right. Hit him with it. Let's see what chat has to say about that one. Oh, hang on. Nathan, Nathan gave us more information. He said, um, i9 9900K, 2070 Super, 32 gigs of RAM, Resonant Evil 8, and Cyberpunk 27, 2077 in 1080p runs great, but psychological horror games don't. It's probably the horror. Probably scaring the bejeebas out of your computer. <laughs> Jump scares. No, I'm just joking. <laughs> We don't play those games, the horror games. If Cyberpunk runs smoothly, everything should run smoothly. That's what I'm thinking, because Cyberpunk is a pretty... A 2070 Super at 1080p. 32 gigs. Yeah, fair enough. That's right. Do you just right. have to turn the resolution down a little bit? No. Beef it up to a 3070? No. If Cyberpunk is happy on it, everything should be happy on it. They might just be poorly optimized games. They exist. They do. Interesting that Cyberpunk works fine. You can see what chat's saying so far in the poll. So far, it's pretty neck and neck. Yes, that's noticeable, and no why bother is pretty close to each other. Huh. Um, 5,900x just for Fortnite? What a waste. Well, there is one other piece. First of all, a, a 5800X certainly would have done the job. But A, I didn't have a spare 5800X. I had a 5900X. My daughter doesn't have one 1440p 144 hertz screen. She has two of them. One of them she games on. The other she watches YouTube videos or Twitch streams on. She multitasks. She... Yes, yeah, she does. ...uses her computer. Yes, she doesn't close every program when she wants to game. She leaves stuff open. Mm -hmm. Yep. And so having dual monitors and having other things running means that having 70 megs of total cache on the CPU plus 12 cores helps. Well, here's the answer. She noticed the difference. It wasn't faster. It was smoother. She complained that with the 3800X, Fortnite would stutter. She'd get into combat, stuff would be going on, and then there'd be frame skips. It, she'd be, she would miss shots or miss kills because of frame skips. And that the frame pacing of the game, she didn't use the word frame pacing because she's 13, but the gist of it is the frame pacing is smoother. On a single monitor, yes, a, a 5800X would have been enough. But since she has two monitors, a 5900X makes total sense. Which is why I had to laugh when the comment came in that said, well, I don't have any problem playing Fortnite on i7 3770. <sighs> well, fair enough. You do you. But... I suspect that comes from that person is used to it and that person doesn't know what else is possible and so they think all games play that way. Mm -hmm. they, that's just how it works because that's their only experience. That I have gotten way too many comments from people here on YouTube, in our Discord, and on Twitter from people who have said, but I just had one two days ago from a guy who said, you know, Tech, I've been watching you now for a while, and at first I thought you were crazy with all your talk of upgrading system RAM, upgrading cores, and he went from 16 to 32 gigs, and he went from 6, to, six cores to 12 cores, and he's like, I am so sorry I ever doubted you. It's not about the frame rate. My machine is nicer to use. Mm-hmm. Everything about my computer is more pleasant. Exactly. And I think a lot of these people who say, oh, that's a waste, simply have no idea what they're missing. Now, as a counterpoint to that, before you all think I'm an elite snob who just thinks that if you can't afford 12 cores, you suck and should go away. That's not true. 
Somebody asked me a week ago on Twitter, Tech, what would your advice be if somebody said, look, I have the budget for the six core basic machine. I have no more money than that. What do you recommend? And I said, then you buy the six cores and you make do and you live with it and it's fine. And you play the games that will work on that six cores. And you don't try to do multi-monitor and multitasking and you don't, I mean, it's, you're gonna be eternally limited. It's like buying a compact pickup truck and expecting it to tow a full-size trailer. Don't do that. Or getting a Corvette and expecting to fit four people in it. It's got two seats. You could strap them to the roof. Can't even I stick got them it. In the I boot. got it. I know. So it's fine. Or, it, or getting um, a Mustang and trying to fit five people in it. It's only got four seats, but two those, in the back. Those two rear seats those don't two count. Those in the back are like jokes. Those are awful. My entire point is that if you otherwise can afford it, life is too short to use a crappy computer. Go do it. I think we need a t-shirt. Life is too short to use a crappy computer. I think a lot of people think there's no point in upgrading. They go, well, I could afford it, but it'd just be a waste of money because there'd be no difference. Those people are wrong. Yeah, no, don't. Go do it. Oh, Nathan. But if you can't afford it, I respect that. Yeah, welcome to the Deal Nation. Thank you for the direct support, Nathan. We appreciate that, mate. Want to read some chat? Um, Brian reckons that ETH will hit uh, 10K in the next 10 to 15 years. If you genuinely believe that Ethereum will go to $10,000 in the next 10 years and you're mining today, there's no reason to stop. Nope. Because it doesn't convert to dollars until you convert it to dollars. If you hold the tokens, then... They're worth what they're worth when then you they're sell. Worth them, yeah, then you'd keep mining. How many of you have a Visa card that pays you up to 8% on every purchase? Crypto.com offers an amazing deal on their Visa card with cash back that is an unbeatable deal. No annual fee, no sign-up fee, and no credit checks or interest payments. It works just like a prepaid debit card, allowing you to spend your money everywhere Visa is accepted. But wait, there's more. Get your Spotify, Netflix, and Amazon Prime subscriptions 100% paid for by Crypto.com. Yes, you heard me right. Use your new Crypto.com Visa card to pay for your subscriptions and you get 100% back in rewards. How would you like to earn up to 14.5% annual interest on your crypto holdings? If you're holding crypto for investment, inflation protection, or price speculation, it can be frustrating feeling like your money is just parked. Interest is paid weekly directly to your account to spend however you like. The interest is also paid in the same token that you're holding. So if you have Bitcoin staked, you are in Bitcoin. If you have Ethereum staked, you are in Ethereum and so on. Of course, you can also buy, sell, and exchange 200 plus different cryptocurrencies. Crypto.com is first and foremost a crypto exchange. Its features including a private wallet with full control of your private keys, margin and derivatives trading options for advanced traders. Crypto credit allows you to borrow against your holdings with no deadlines or credit checks. Crypto NFTs allows you to explore the new world of non-fungible tokens. Crypto Pay allows you to pay any merchant with crypto and earn up to 10% back in rewards. If you are looking for the place to be in crypto, use our link down in the video description below to sign up today. You will get a $25 crypto sign up bonus and 30 days of 0% transaction fees on credit and debit card purchases of crypto. It supports the channel and gets you a great offer to get started.